Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today I'm going to be talking about Vocaloids. So the reason I'm going to talk about Vocaloids today is uh, my my junior junior high age daughter has recently gotten into Vocaloids. She is playing rhythm games that all uh, feature prominent Vocaloids. Okay. All right. So and when when she started doing this, I was like, I re- I understood. I had the barest understanding of what a Vocaloid is, and whenever my kids get into something seriously, I always try to make sure that I just get a, a very base understanding of what that thing they're in is, and the, the biggest reason is uh, language, you just like, you, if someone's really into something, you want to talk to them about it, if you don't really understand what that thing is, you can't talk to them about it, if you don't understand the jargon, right, so, um, so let me, I'm just going to explain what I learned recently about Vocaloids, alright, so what are Vocaloids? Vocaloids are digital music performers. They are digital, and they are music performers, okay? So they are um, digital creations that sing songs, okay? Uh, I'll give you an example of five prominent Vocaloids. Uh, all of these are have songs that you can listen to, um, and also you can watch them, okay? And I'll just give you the, right off the top of my head. So you have Heath... Uh, Hatsune Hatsune Miku is the number one Vocaloid in the world. Uh, after that, you have, and then these are other prominent Vocaloids. So you have uh, Ka, Kagamine Rin, and you also have Mako. Now, all three of those are female Vocaloids, and then uh, two prominent male Vocaloids are Kagamine Len, and then also um, Kaito, okay? All right, so if you're noticing, the vast majority of all Vocaloids, I would say 90 to 95% of all Vocaloids are Japanese, okay? Now, what exactly, now I just want to go a little deeper into what a Vocaloid is. So, one, you can't shake a Vocaloid's hand, right? They don't, they they only exist in the digital space. But in the digital space, functionally, they're like a person, okay? So, uh, Hatsune Miku, Right, which I'll just refer to as Miku going forward. So Miku, um, she has a specific hairstyle. Um, you know, she is presented whenever Hats, whenever Miku is presented uh, in any type of context where she's performing or if she's speaking to someone, which would all be in a digital a digital space. Okay, she's always presented consistently. Okay, that's another thing about these Vocaloids is they're treated like people by the creators. Okay, and they are digitally created. Okay. It's absolutely, it's actually an incredibly fascinating subject, in my opinion. All right, so you have all these these Vocaloids, right? Now, I think, what are the elements of a Vocaloid, okay? The elements of a Vocaloid, the reason they were created is to create, is to be these musical, to be music performers, okay? So, once you understand that, it goes a little further. So, the four primary elements that surround every Vocaloid are song, Okay, so each one of them sings a vast array of songs, okay? And then in addition to that, you have outfits. So Vocaloids are dressed in highly elaborate outfits. Now, one of the things that's interesting is this outfit thing, I realize, is a big, big part of Vocaloids because since they are digitally created, they're the perfect uh, platform for fashion. So anyone who's interested in fashion is probably going to end up... uh, interacting with Vocaloids in one way or another, okay? All right, which is very, very interesting because fashion is a big part of our lives. Everybody wears clothes. It's kind of a, it's a, it's a mega staple of humanity, right? Okay. All right, so next is dance. So all of these um, Vocaloids, they don't just sing, they all dance, okay? And uh, and dance is a big part. So the choreography that they do is, is unique to them, all of that, Okay. And uh, it's, it's quite interesting. So, and then the last element is the stage. So whenever a Vocaloid is performing, they are singing a song in an elaborate outfit, doing, choreo- doing a choreographed dance on an, sometimes an incredibly elaborate designed stage, right? Now, what's interesting is all of us have, have watched, every single person who's watching this video has seen a live performer. Okay, and the live performers. This is part of what they do as well. 
Uh, every single, you know, live performer has to choose all the elements of this, right? And now the thing with Vocaloids is since it's all digitally created, you can shift out those parts incredibly quickly, right? Like you can create songs more quickly. You can create outfits more quickly. You can choreograph dances more quick quickly for these Vocaloids to perform. You can, um, you can also create these incredibly elaborate stages, which you could never create um, in, uh, in the real world, right? So Vocaloids are, are pretty incredible. Now, how do people interact with Vocaloids, right? How do real life, you know, meet people <laughs> interact with Vocaloids? Well, there's, there's, a, there's a specific number of ways. The first is you can watch a Vocaloid. So Vocaloids do, do music videos the same way a live performer would, and you can watch a Vocaloids music video, okay? Any of the, any of the uh, Vocaloids I just talked about all have a video, multiple videos that you could watch, right? You can also listen to the songs that the Vocaloid did. I wanna talk about the listening part. So when you listen to a Vocaloid song, all Vocaloids have a synthesized voice, okay? Their voice is actually created synthetically using a computer and specifically a program, okay? Uh, which is also called Vocaloid, but that, you know, it's a distinction, um, you know, technically Vocaloid is is a software that creates these synthesized voice, but Vocaloid has become, has, has become the overarching term used to refer to Miku and Kato and Rin and Len, uh, um, you know, all, all of them, right? And Mako as well. So all of them. And there are others, like Gumi is another, uh, there are ones that come out, so they create new Vocaloids all the time. Um, and so that's another one. So that's the listen part. So you can watch or you can listen, okay? Also, you can attend, all right? Now in America, this is very, very difficult. Um, and actually, I wanna say this also, so while we talk about attend, uh, oh, I did mention this, 95% of all Vocaloid activity is centered within Japan, okay? Uh, now that is changing, and there are absolutely uh, there are absolutely additional um, interactions now happening with Vocaloids. Okay, all right. So you have you have all this going on, and um, so you have you have, you have the lit, you have the watch, you have the listen, you have the attend. You can attend in Japan specifically. You can attend a Vocaloid concert. You can go to a concert and they will create that Vocaloid for you to watch on stage as a, as a live performer, which is pretty incredible. Like, uh, you know, basically it's real people going to a real concert, but the performer is not real. The performer is digitally created, right? That's, that is absolutely fascinating. It's one of the most part, fascinating parts of Vocaloids, okay? So you have those, those three ways of interacting. Uh, the next is the way that my daughter is interacting with these Vocaloids and you can play. So almost all vocal, actually, no. The most prominent Vocaloids are involved in, in video game rhythm games, right? So uh, rhythm game as a genre of a video game, they usually have these and it's one of the, it, 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 it's one of the ways that you see Vocaloids really in their element because it uses all those four aspects, the, the song, the outfit, the stage, you know, all four of those major, major aspects, um, and dance, which would be the fourth, the fourth aspect. So you have all those, all those moving, right? And then the last, the last way that people can interact with these Vocaloids is they can create them, right? So, um, so there are more and more, there are plugins that would allow you to create a song for a specific Vocaloid or allow you to create an outfit for a Vocaloid or to choreograph a dance for a Vocaloid or even to craft a stage for a Vocaloid. So, and then also at the very, very highest layer, if anyone ever got interested, Vocaloids have been around for over a decade and you could actually create your own Vocaloid, although that would be incredibly complex. And the people who are creating vocal Vocaloids today, they are... Um, specific companies, right, that own these these Vocaloids and, and go forward. Now, these Vocaloids are, are really amazing. I think they're really amazing from a couple of perspectives. They're cross-cultural, they're modern, they're fully modern, and they are a, uh, excuse me, they are a bound medium, okay? Um, and what do I mean by a bound medium? So, <clears throat> excuse me, so a bound medium 
Um, one of, I think one of the things that makes Vocaloids work and that makes them really interesting and makes them you know compelling to, to interact with in all the ways that I just talked about interacting with for you know groups of people, right, is that uh, they are bound in that you can tell when you watch these Vocaloids that the biggest thing that they're deciding to do to make these Vocaloids as real as possible, to make them so, s singers that someone could follow the same way you would follow Taylor Swift or, um, <laughs> that's interesting. Uh, I was kind of trying to figure out who Taylor Swift's male counterpart would be, and I'm not sure there is one. Um, so, you know, or Maroon 5 or any, well, actually Maroon 5 doesn't fit because vocal, that's another thing. Vocaloids are not bands. They are single digital music performers. Okay. So, uh, if there's a pro, I'm sure there's a prominent male singer, uh, Sam Smith, let's use Sam Smith. All right. So, you know, you could follow, um, a Vocaloid the same way you would, you, you would follow Taylor Swift or Sam Smith. Right. All right. So, oh, my apologies. I just realized, I think, I think Sam Smith is gender fluid and may not desire to be referred to as male. Sorry about that. All right, so uh, I think that's relatively new. So, uh, so anyway, um, <laughs> so I guess there's complexity even in, in following real, actual <laughs> live singers. So uh, actually, so with the Vocaloids, uh, one thing. So it is a bound medium, and you could see that one of the ways that these companies are really making them very real is by the decisions they are saying the Vocaloid will not do X, right? So one of the things is you don't see Vocaloids just going into movies, right? You, they, they don't generally put them into movies. Or even if they are put into a movie or show, generally they are going to be um, they're going to be singing and dancing. They're going to do the thing that a Vocaloid does, right? And the other thing is when, when Vocaloids are shown, almost always they're shown in that same aspect. Um, stage, performance stage, here's the outfit, here's the song, here's the dance, right? And by doing that, you you bound, you put boundaries around this, right? Now, one of the things that's interesting, and we're going to come back to bound, uh, bounded medium in just one second. This is incredibly modern. This is using all of it's everything we have as a modern society, right? So, so essentially, one of so things like Vocaloids make me. I really like to see things like Vocaloids become popular because it's the most. It's very ephemeral, right? So, and and it also is telling us that we are we really as as a world are reaching a point where there are multiple nations that have no fear of you know running short on food and shelter, right? Like you know when you start dealing with things like Vocaloids and you have and Vocaloids have considerable fan bases, right? Thousands, if not low millions, of, of viewers and watchers and interactors. You, you can see that we're we're starting to get very high up on Maslow's hierarchy and we're dealing with art more than with survival. That's great. That's good for everyone, right? That is really, really good for everyone. Uh, Cross-cultural. So these are, you know, um, Vocaloids started in Japan. They're they're very big in Japan. But they are coming over to America very quickly and they are, um, and they're very, uh, and so, and they have their own distinct fans. So one of the things that w I was talking with my daughter about this and she explained to me that, she, one, she's really enjoying these rhythm games. And then, uh, and so, you know, she played uh, one of these rhythm games on her brother's PS Vita, right? He, uh, and he, he said, hey, check this out, doll, I think you'd like it. Which is really nice, I don't take that for granted, you know, kid, like, siblings don't always get along, right? So whenever I see my siblings get along, I encourage that. And uh, so this was really, you know, and this entire, ex my daughter's interest in Vocaloids came from zero uh, input from me, right? Like, so um, her oldest brother, he's like, hey, I have uh, this PS Vita, I got this game, this rhythm game, uh, check it out. So she played it, she absolutely loved it. Then she came to, to me and her mother and uh, and said, hey, I've done the research online and found out GameStops that have this, this game for, this game I would like, and I would like to go to the GameStop a week from now because the game is $22 and I have $17, so when I'm done, I'm said, okay, hey, relax, I got it. So I took her out that day and I covered the rest. You know, she paid for the paid for the game, and uh, and then she bought um, a PS4 game, which is Hatsune, uh, Hatsune, Hatsune Miku Project Diva X. All right. 
And so she then played this on our large screen television. So I really got to see Vocaloids, you know, and see exactly what they do. She played through a considerable amount of the game, and I got to see this fast iteration of, of outfits. The outfits is a very, very big part of these Vocaloids. So one of the things is, as she was playing the game, uh, one of the things that happens is you watch this Vocaloid, and the Vocaloid performs the song the same way a live performer would. But the Vocaloid can do things and can be surrounded by things that a live performer never could. So one, the stages are always far more elaborate than um, than would be possible for a for an actual live singer. Uh, the Vocaloids themselves, like Hatsune Miku, has uh, pigtails that are literally four feet long each, right? And they would be incredibly unwieldy for any real uh, real singer to to actually interact with, right? But Hatsune, Hatsune, Hatsune Miku, right, she can, uh, the, her design, she's not bounded by physics, right, you know, which is really interesting. Then the other thing is, and especially when it comes to these outfits, right, so as my daughter was playing the game, when she would do extremely well, during a song, in the middle of the song, the character's outfit would just be immediately transformed and completely changed, right? Right in the middle of a song, literally in the middle of a dance move, right? It was it was pretty incredible, right? And that again cannot be done by a live performer, right? So these these Vocaloids are really amazing in that they are emulating something in the real world and going just a smidge further, but also keeping the bounds around these Vocaloids very very constrained. Okay, and it, it and I really I really feel like Vocaloids are definitely a meta topic that are going to become more and more important in modern society because what they're doing for for Vocaloids it's very bounded at this point, but they've solved a ton of problems that are going to need to be solved by a whole lot of other companies. Right, I think voc uh, you know Vocaloids will be studied by virtually every single company that makes software today eventually, within the next five years, easily within the next five years, right? The other thing is this cross-cultural, right? So they are, so they they came from Japan and now they're coming over to the U.S. and Vocaloids have fans all over the world. They have fans in Brazil, they have fans in India, they have fans, you know, um, in Africa. They have fans on every single continent, right? And that that's new, like that's another thing that the only way that Vocaloids can reach other people is over the internet, right? And, and you know, basically through some type of digital medium, right? And so it really is, it's really incredible. Uh, Vocaloids are really incredible. The other thing, the last thing I want to talk about with Vocaloids is how they interact, how they, what do Vocaloids mean to AI, artificial intelligence, and machine learning? So one, let's talk about machine learning and AI, and then let's talk about vo Vocaloids. Machine learning is a new tool, is a new, it's, it's a new name, right? Now, one thing that's interesting is um, artificial intelligence is quickly becoming a boondoggle, okay? And uh, in that, a lot of incredibly smart people spend a lot of time working on artificial intelligence and realize that most likely no one has said this. This is me, Scott Garibay, saying this. I think the industry overall realized that artificial intelligence was a... Um, was a pipe dream. It was never really going to occur. I don't think there'll ever be the. I, this is okay. I'll go a little further. Uh, the idea of the Terminator is ridiculous. There's never going to be Terminator robots that that um, that are an active threat to mankind ever. And the reason why is machines are incredibly difficult to maintain. The idea of maintain of, of machines maintaining themselves, machines that can't be turned off. It's ludicrous. Every company in the world right now would love a machine that, you know, is persistent and can't be turned off. It, it's it's ludicrous. And so one of the things that's happened with artificial intelligence is you see the use of the term artificial intelligence going down, and you see the use of the term machine learning going up. Machine learning is very real, okay? So you can get applications and software that emulates extremely restricted portions of of human activity, okay, and human intellectual activity, right, and that's machine learning, and and uh, so right now we're in machine learning, machine learning is trying to deliver us to artificial intelligence, I don't think we're ever going to really, uh, I don't think there'll ever be a, a machine that could pass the Turing test, I don't think there'll ever be a physical machine that that threatens mankind or any of, any of those things, right, um, and... <clears throat> 
So all of that, so you have machine learning going to AI, and part of that is Vocaloids. Vocaloids really are, uh, it is machine learning actually in application. You're seeing a lot of machine learning applied to Vocaloids. The other thing that's really cool about Vocaloids is a lot of things in, um, in, internet, in information technology are, are vaporware, right? So like people talk about, you know, um, voice recognition. Uh, voice recognition is, even today, is generally vaporware. Very few people use it. Um, it's not used extensively. Most of the time when you talk to people about it, they're frustrated because their, their voice recognition software doesn't work the way they want it to work. All of those type of things, right? Um, <clears throat> and so you're still waiting for it to arrive. But with Vocaloids, they have arrived. They are fully, you know, they are fully functional right now. And Vocaloids are can be used in video games. You can listen to their songs. You can watch their videos. They are up and running, right? So I think Vocaloids are one of the best examples of functioning machine learning. And they are also um, an attempt to approach artificial intelligence. It really is because you inter you can interact with them in five different ways that I just talked about, right? And that's pretty incredible. So I, I really feel like Vocaloids are an incredibly complex and fascinating topic, and uh, and I'd I'd love to hear what what your thoughts are on Vocaloids. Take care.